Hi there friends and welcome to my farming guide for Orbs of Expansion in Loop Hero. I'm Icon and this video will guide you through all you need to know to acquire these beautiful thingies in a pretty steady and easy way. So as usual I do a little bit of a summary before we get started. The first part of this video will be all about the theory crafting behind the build and why we do it and the second part of the video will be a gameplay example because I felt like if you guys were just for here for the theory and you want to do it yourself you can tune out of the video and go for go out on your own so why would we want to farm orbs of expansion it's quite easy if you see the river here needs 15 of those and overall you would need 10 for them for the warehouses and these things are behind a lot of useful buildings and therefore we want to farm them. A orb of expansion though is quite hard to acquire. If we look it up here in the encyclopedia we have the problem that you need to have more than four enemies at once if you want to grab these things. But that is not really a problem. I came up with a nice strategy to just get things done. So the build here tries to minimize the amount of cards you're using. And I'm going to talk about all these cards in detail while I'm doing the gameplay example, but to cut it short, this is a build which utilizes fast spawning creatures, spider cocoons, groves, and chrono crystals in combination to create large fights as quick as possible. A really mandatory prerequisite for this is my opinion in my opinion the arsenal because we will do that with a warrior and I'm going to use the retaliation damage of the helmet. You will have a much harder time doing this without the retaliation way but it's not impossible after all. So I use the vampire mansion because it always adds another enemy on top of that and the battlefield because it can spawn extra ghosts. Every enemy beyond the first increases the chance of spawning, an, uh, of spawning an orb of expansion and therefore it's really worth it. This is basically the main core of this build. The cocoons, the groves, the mansions, the battlefields and the chrono crystals. The cemetery is only here because I don't really know what I actually should pick up. You could also go for a village if you want to, but I didn't discover anything I really wanted here. The ruins I didn't pick up because the scorch worms just don't die every time. The swamps because I didn't like the mosquitoes and yeah, but you have to pick two cards. So that's how it works. Here in this segment, forests and meadows are my personal favorites because meadows harm, are very good with chrono crystals and forests I love attack speed. You can also opt out on the uh, forests and just go for mountains, but you could also go for deserts. deserts. Decide for yourself as you want to use it. It's pretty okay. One last word, the less cards you use, the better. So if you want to reduce anything here, it's just fine. But I felt like this was one of the most reliable combos I put up yet. So if you want to farm these things, you can go for higher chapters, which will yield bonus resources. But if you want to make a nice brain dead and simple farm run, you go for chapter one. It doesn't have the extra bonus resources, but at the same time, it's a lot easier and the monsters are not that strong. As you see here, enemies strength is scaling up the higher you get into the uh, into chapters and enemies get extra abilities. So we're going, I'm going to do the example run on chapter one. And that's that. You combine these buildings with the Chrono Crystals to maximize the spawn speed of the enemies and you put up retaliation gear to kill them easily. I'll show you now in the next part how it's done in detail. So once we start here, we just uh, press on and kill some slimes, you know, things in a, a beginner adventurer does. Most importantly though, let's uh, put up the arsenal so we unlock the uh, helmet slot. The helmet is a really, really important part of the strategy because every enemy attacking us now will take damage for that. And this is so good if you're fighting against a lot of enemies. So the first spider cocoon placed down. There are a few things you could think about. The less tiles next to the spider cocoon, the better because basically you want to limit the amount of tiles they can spawn on because they always spawn on random tiles. And you also want to leave some room for 
vampire mansions and chrono crystals, but since this is the first spot we're uh, doing, there's not so much of a hassle behind that. Also keep in mind that damage to all is a very, very desirable trait for this scenario as well, because we will fight against a lot of enemies quite permanently, and therefore everything which increases our AoE cap capabilities is quite good for us. So I'm holding back on a few of those meadows because I want to combine them with the first Chrono Crystals that drop. The first few loops you do with this build are quite simple, boring, and not too valuable. With the groves, I tend to go somewhere else. I don't like to put the groves right next to the cocoons, but you could. You could also combine them, but that's more of a flavor thing. I like to separate the spider zone from the red wolf zone, but that's uh, actually not really that important. I didn't talk about supplies here because I wanted to do that in the aftermath of that video, but supplies are absolutely not necessary at all. I'm placing down more and more forest tiles because I love the extra attack speed, especially if you are able to get some... What's it called again? Uh, some damage to all cards. This is uh, even better. Now, since we got the Chrono Crystal set up, or available, we're going to place down some here. The Chrono Crystals need to be in the radius of the spawning point to make things happen. And uh, sadly, well, none of these Chrono Crystals can be combined with meadows, so let's just place down the meadows somewhere else. Doesn't really matter. I just use them because... Right. Equipping a few more items. So, the first few loops were uh, not that successful, but as you see here already, we got a uh, completed tile. I forgot to mention beacons. Beacons are also quite interesting because beacons increase attack speed and they are quite useful for this scenario because with attack speed increases on the enemies they also kill themselves faster on yourself also i like to destroy those villages which get created by the forests immediately because they are just no fun they are dealing way too much damage to you and therefore i don't want them so a high level retaliation damage is of course uh, one thing we want to go for and uh, yeah, damage to all, that's quite desirable. All right, now things are, start to be more interesting. Now we can place down more cocoons, which get in, uh, which get manipulated by the uh, Chrono Crystals and also more groves. And this is where this build starts to pick up steam. Whenever you farm a four-man group of monsters, you get a certain chance of or, uh, earning a orb of expansion. That's why I also mentioned that it would be beneficial to tackle higher difficulty levels if you are able to, because this just increases your chance of getting more of them, but at the same time you also risk, increase your risk of frying yourself. As you see here, simple and easy, they killed themselves very very quickly without us taking too much damage. Keep in mind that this works the easiest on chapter one because the monsters have no extra abilities once the monsters get their extra abilities well with vampires they get start to receive vampirism and heal themselves more with the spiders well the spiders are the least influenced and i think spiders can be easily tackled on chapter two without any issues and here we finally got our vampire mansion the Vampire Mansion doesn't need to be in the influence of the Chrono Crystals because it has no influence on the passing of time. The Blade of Dawn skill is also very, very good for this one because every day you get one big AoE attack you can fire on your enemies and this just speeds up the whole process a little bit more. But you're not that lucky to receive that trait every time. And as you see here, I have no sustain um, no sustained stats at all. My loot is quite uh, shabby, to put it into friendly words, but nevertheless, it's all working out quite well. Finally, the vampire mansions and the battlefields are uh, are now spawning as well, and now we can and talk a little bit of business here. So, the battlefields are one of the most important. Well. Improvers of the strategy. Well, 
The thing is, with the battlefields, you receive a chance to spawn a ghost whenever you kill an enemy. And that increases the total amount of enemies in that fight substantially. I haven't really checked out if this is really working like I think, but since the game tells you that every enemy beyond the fourth increases the chance of a drop. I'm pretty sure that this has to work like that because the game does not allow you to spawn more enemies than five on one tile. Here we go, our first orb of expansion on the field where we had six enemies at once. So you see, that's how the strategy usually should work. And this is also the lowest available difficulty. So it is quite easy. If you want to speed it up because you're, uh, you want to do less grinding, well, increase the difficulty and increase your risks of getting nothing at all. <laughs> That's what I like about this game. So here we go, our second Orb of Expansion, and I think that pretty much concludes the demonstration of the strategy quite well, because, you see, it works. And you see now how it works. Also keep in mind that putting the uh, battlefields into the uh, vicinity of Chrono Crystals doesn't do anything at all, because their condition triggers at the beginning of each loop, and this is nothing the Chrono Crystals really amplify. When you do this kind of strategy also, don't overdo it, just uh, keep on a pace where you have enough loot, and for example on this occasion I'll just opt out because I got what I wanted. I'll just uh, hope I'll survive this here, and then I'm out of here because it's easy to fry yourself with way too much pressure there. So that's why I also put up only two danger zones on the whole map, and I didn't do more than that. So you see here, the rat wolves are actually quite dangerous and way more dangerous than the spiders, and if you don't like it or if they are killing you too often, you could also opt out on those. They are definitely the more dangerous pack here, and as we see here, Ah, uh, it's, uh, it's growing very, very dangerous here, and, uh, yeah, well, looks like I put a little bit too much on the plate here. We won't be making it this time, so, yeah, well, that's a good example on how not to do it, or, 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 will we survive? Seems like we survive! Yeah! Alright, so probably not. Give me a sec, I need to tweak that. So, some region, some better weapon, and is this, uh, yeah. All right, Whew. last second save, but it also showed uh, showed quite well that the red wolves are way more dangerous than the spiders. So, let's retreat and be happy about the uh, plundered orbs. And supply-wise, I want to talk about a little uh, bit of uh, a little something here: the Skinner's knives. They increase your damage against red wolves, and I didn't equip many of those, you see, they would do a lot of difference. Also, quite good for this strategy is using silver wares and silver pendants because they increase the damage against undead, which are vampires, or reduce the damage taken from vampires, therefore I really like them. Also shoe nails reflect more damage, and beyond that I like to use the HP regeneration extras, but seriously, it's up to you what you use after that. I only wanted to mention the Skinner's Knives because I felt like they are really, really good for this usage here. Alrighty, so I hope that was helpful for you, and if you have any further questions or if you want to add something into the strategy, it goes down in the comments below. Leave me a like if that was helpful for you, or even a subscription to the channel if you feel like you want to stay tuned for more content from my side. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and have more fun with Loop Hero. And see you soon. Bye-bye.